Would you like to see me suffer some type 2 fun in the next 24 hours? Check this episode out of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. I am really excited because I have been planning a project for two years and today's the day I'm going to go do it. I'm going to climb the Lost Arrow Spire and rig the two classic high lines up there. However, I'm going to do it by myself and I'm going to do it in a day and I'm going to do it from my house back to my house in that day. So couch to couch instead of car to car. Um, and I'm going to rig both the 55 footer and the 110 footer. Sorry I'm using feet. That's what we call them. This is going to be pretty challenging because I'm leaving at 9 o'clock tonight uh, because there's almost no wind between 8 a.m. and noon uh, each day and I want to highline during that time uh, and which means I have to climb at night. And hiking at night is always easier for that trail because the sun just beats on it uh, in the morning if you're to start early in the morning. So. Uh, it's going to be pretty challenging. I'm going to go through all the night and I'm going to be climbing in the night by myself, uh, self belaying, aid climbing up, you know, the Lost Arrow Spire like you have to do. It's kind of technical. Um, it's only two pitches, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Now I've done a lot of prep. I mean, I've done a lot more prep than working out for this thing. So actually I've done very little working out for this thing. But uh, I, I think the magic is in the logistics. Um, and the idea is not to take up too much gear. And I am bringing enough stuff to make it completely safe and uh, legitimate highline anchors on both sides and legitimately connect it all up. So you can still go light and fast and still stay safe and redundant. Um, at least that's the goal. I know I have enough stuff to do that. Let's see if it goes as well as I hope. But uh, this is kind of uh, ambitious for me. Uh, back in the day, um, 2010 was the first time we tried rigging it. Um, well, I tried climbing in 2009 and we repelled off the wrong tree and it started to rain. I couldn't even climb it the first time I went up there to try climbing it. Then the year later, I tried to uh, climb and rig the high line and I could only climb it, ran out of energy to rig. And then the next year, we did climb it quicker and we did rig it, but we had to rig it a separate day and it took four people seven hours to rig the 55 footer. So um, that the Lost Arrow Spire has kicked my ass for years now. Now I've had successful trips since then, but um, I, it's now my, has been my dream to go kick its ass by doing it couch to couch on a weekend day, uh, in a day, by myself, both lines. Now I got everything packed really efficiently uh, the first thing on top of the bag is the, the rope I rappel off of. The next thing in there is my harness with all my gear already on it in the order of the pieces I need. And the rope under that is this uh, backpack that I wear for belaying myself. Um, I have done multiple big walls and so I'm pretty comfortable with the whole uh, aid climbing, aid climbing in the dark, and self belaying. Um, the combo of that makes it tricky, but uh, I have everything super organized, so when I get up there, I'm not yard sailing and flaking ropes for two hours before I can even start rappelling. The idea is five minutes after I get up there, I can start going down. And as I go down to the flake, which is where you have to rig one of the anchors, I'm going to pre-build that anchor so I don't have to go back to it after I go down and back up the other side. And that is going to save me a lot of time. Uh, rigging the 110 footer, I have to slide back and go over, but I should have enough time to be able to do all that. And I can use my climbing rope, since I'll be done with it, as the backup. So I've got uh, 50.5 pounds, including my food, my water, and plenty of warm clothes. I'm not sure how cold it'll be with the high winds. It is usually at night. I have slept on the Lost Arrow Spire before, uh, when I went from the ground up and I've been up there a bunch, it is super windy first thing in the morning. It's only from eight to noon is it generally not windy. So imagine uh, 40 mile per hour winds at least in the dark where you can't even see the ground because you're at least a thousand feet up at the lowest point, 2000 feet up uh, from the ground. 
uh, 3,000 feet above the valley floor. You're a full kilometer above the valley floor. Um, all you are is in this bubble of light that you're in. Um, you haven't slept all night and you're just like a robot going through the motions. And then when you get to the top, roughly about when the sun comes up, the sun brings a whole new energy and refreshment to your soul now that you can see. And I can rig the anchors and at eight o'clock can walk the 55. Hopefully around nine o'clock I can walk the 110. If I got spare time, I might either take a nap or just walk back and forth since the lines are up. But uh, I'm gonna take you on uh, this journey with me. I'm just gonna use my phone to film it. Hopefully it's not too windy. And you can watch me suffer some type two fun for the next 24 hours. Okay, the sun just went down. I'm about to take off. It is nine o'clock and uh, I'm feeling really good. And I was wondering, if I eat that whole pizza, uh, if that's cheating or not. It is 12, 11 in the morning. It took me about three hours to get here. Uh, maybe 10 minutes at the car. Uh, I was able to put a couple slices of that pizza in my backpack. So I'm officially at 51 pounds. I am not tired, I am super stoked. Let's see if I stay that way. Oh man, I'm five minutes into this thing and I don't think I'm gonna make it. I'm tired, I'm already lost. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm pretty fucking tired though. Uh, it's 4.15. Um, I got up here in about three hours, 45 minutes, but I fell asleep trying to eat my applesauce just now. My rappel is set up. I had to come back up the hill so there wouldn't be so much wind that I couldn't do my video vlog for the, the section. Um, now my priority is to get into the notch, see how I feel, go from there one step at a time. There was a few low points on the hike. Uh, the first 75% was fine and then uh, I, had to ref I had to fill up my water, filter my water at the river, which added another 10 pounds. <laughs> Oh, I had to keep stopping every five minutes after that. Um, but I'm up here. I'm ready. I'm awake-ish. See how this goes. Okay, I finally got my rappel set up. I'm on the rappel. The wind is uh, pretty aggressive. Which makes it even more crowded. And uh, I'm going straight to blow me off the split. Which is up to Okay, I just finished my first... Uh, pitch and I repelled back down and now I'm gonna go back up Start the second pitch. Okay. I just finished the hard stuff. Now. I only have a bolt ladder I thought you might like to see the rainbow. I feel Way more awake with the Sun out It's funny as I still have all my jackets on But it's uh, not as windy anymore and then uh, This is all I have left Plus uh, two or three more above that. All right, I got up here at about 8.50. I gotta still go back down and go get uh, my stuff. Feels really good to be up here. Whoever was belaying me really sucked. They kept hosing me and not giving me enough rope, you know? Um, pro tip of the day, don't wear two jackets when you know the sun's gonna hit you on a lead. Uh, I got really hot. 10.38. And I have the uh, small line rigged. That uh, carabiner is not my leash, don't worry. Um, because I have to move the slack line over to the 110, I am going to take this extra tail of eight millimeter and make two lines. Uh, so I can remove the slack line later and still be able to go back and forth. But yeah, we are... I'm gonna I'm gonna slide over out of cam, check the anchor, whatever. It's it's pretty damn safe right now, and then um, and then I can walk it, and then I can uh, set up the 110. I'm all tied in, ready to do the 55 footer. Um, it's really really redundant. I used literally everything I have, which was a lot of stuff. Um, this anchor is like a five bolt thing that doesn't. Uh, extend out but it's mostly equalized and um, all the tails are backed off to the bolts going down the spire 
uh, I added a cam over there and because uh, uh, you can kind of move it down to get it to like hold some of the weight and so um, I feel pretty good about that uh, three-point anchor over there also because it's uh, the rope builds up to the tree so that really helps uh, my peace of mind in case something doesn't go well and still be a ride and this right here is the 110 um, coming to the bolts directly behind me um, this spire definitely needs new bolts there's just crap up here but there's enough it's fine um, I don't think I'm gonna rig the 110 um, I it's 1130 this line I, I kind of spent too much time on because I was gonna uh, I was saving pieces to, to rig this thing um, and it's just I don't know kind of tired the wind's gonna pick up in like 30 minutes um, so it's not even gonna be really fun to walk and then um, I mean I still have a two, two or three hour hike down I mean I mean to get off the spire takes time too so um, I definitely need to be uh, home before dark because driving driving in the daylight will be fine I just don't want to do it when the Sun goes down so um, I definitely spent too much time aid climbing because I'm rusty after basically two or three years of not doing it so um, I mean it I mean it went well it's what four four and a half hours to get up here but it's um, <laughs> this in a day project would be a lot better with two people obviously um, but it'd be fun to do a car to car project with two people uh, and do all three lines which would be very very doable if I don't have six hours of driving in, uh, in the 24 hours I'm trying to get stoked I mean I am on the Lost Aerospire walking the classic the classic classic of classics so I'm, I'm just figured instead of rushing over and rigging this thing I'd just sit here an extra 20 minutes and just enjoy the moment so uh, this still looks a successful trip assuming this goes well and then uh, yeah I'm happy with it I'm just I didn't drop anything today except my stoke <laughs> I lost it hard anywho I need to walk a high line ciao okay I I full manned it I felt I struggled I uh, because I'm tired and then I, I felt the flow and then I full manned it so did what I came out here to do I am going to derig this now people are always curious how to do a Tyrolean traverse technically a Tyrolean traverse is these red ropes here and you slide across basically like a slack line minus the walking um, but people call anytime they go off the Lost Arrow Spire the Tyrolean traverse basically what you do is I'm gonna tie these two red ropes to me and then I'm gonna use my climbing rope and rappel off the tip at some point those ropes are on my anchor over there and they're gonna start pulling me towards that wall once I'm over on that wall then uh, I just have to uh, ascend up the, the ropes and then I have to pull like a rappel pull my climbing rope off the tip make sure there's no knot in the end hope it doesn't get stuck and then pull it through the uh, the fixed anchor over on on my side that I'm at right now so it's a really beautiful day out um, the wind hasn't picked up yet it's probably going to real soon because it's afternoon and uh, there's very few people here it's perfect weather this has been a really great day I'm just completely out of energy I'm back at the tree um, bringing all that stuff back while doing the Tyrolean traverses uh, as uh, heavy because you don't want to let any of the ropes dangle. But um, I think I did pretty good rope management today. Uh, it's a lot more rope management doing a climb solo. Um, but anyways, I have a mess to clean up here, but I just got to get in the backpack and I can start going. Um, and then I should stay within the 24 hours. But I'm not like tired, tired. I'm just like low energy, stove gone. I'm happy with what I did. I'm happy with what I did today, but um, yeah, type two fun. Okay, I am more stoked about being at my car right now than what I did today. 
I, I am out of gas. And I don't mean when the gas in my car. So I'm excited and I'm gonna get some lemonade. Woo, for a successful-ish trip. So I'm excited I did it. I just drank a lot of coffee so I assume I'll still be able to sleep. But um, I'm glad I got it out of my system. I'm glad I did it because I thought about it for so much. But um, <laughs> it was a lot of freaking work. Uh, especially for a short high line. But it's a classic. Um, it is really cool because when I was highlighting the, the full man I did, um, I wasn't feeling it, obviously. And I stood up and struggled, just like, you know, if you're not into it. But then, like, because I wanted the line, obviously, and I know I can do it, um, I got into the flow. And it was really cool to just turn it on when I need to. I don't know if I've ever been that tired when I've highlined before. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, definitely, I find climbing to be way more dangerous than highlining. Um, while I was there this morning, I just found out um, that two climbers fell off El Capitan. We're not sure what the reasons are yet. So that just kind of brings it close to home, the risks involved with climbing. Obviously, highlining too. You don't get on unless you know it's safe, right? Whereas climbing, you come across a lot of uh, situations that you just kind of have to push through, which at the end of the day, it's fun, but I feel like there's a lot more risk. Um, of course, I mean, of course, the driving was probably the most dangerous thing I did today. Um, so, yeah, it was fun to, to check that off the list, and now I don't know what else I'm going to try to do. Always got something in the books. Okay, today is Sunday, and I'm all cleaned up and rested-ish, um, and just been kind of reflecting on the trip. To go from not being able to climb it, to climbing it in 12 hours, to uh, successfully climbing it, then I rigged the high line, or tried rigging the high line, rigged it successfully, couldn't walk it, then I rigged it and could walk it barely, and then we rigged it and we walked it like you're supposed to be able to. Just to have this whole journey, and then uh, it's fun to just kind of put it to the pieces together that I know I can do now, and do it all in a day by myself. Now, I didn't get the 110, but I mean, we can't focus on the things in life that we don't have, rather than we should focus on the things we do have. So, I mean, it was still amazing. I thought it would be a lot easier, but I don't think I accounted for the rappelling taking me almost an hour um, because I, you can't do you can't pre-do everything. You kind of have to build the anchor, then you got to attach the rope afterwards. And I'm going really slow because safety was my number one. I promised Kim that I would be safe. Now I did lose time going a little bit safer, uh, mostly because my lead head wasn't there. But I mean, solo four and a half hours wasn't bad. I just I didn't account for the time getting off the spire. Um, nor the fact that I'd be as tired as I was. I knew, I mean, I knew I'd be tired, but I was pretty tired. But you know what's funny? Is it took me more time to pack for this trip and to clean up from it than for me to actually do the damn project. So maybe a fun in a day project would just see if I could pack, do it, and clean up from the trip in a 24 hour period. But I'm still tired from yesterday, and so I'm not gonna do that again for a while. But uh, I didn't. 22 hours and 57 minutes, technically. Um, couch to couch, off the couch. I didn't really work out a lot before I did that, and technically I just came out of winter where we don't do high lines as often. So it'd be really interesting to hear your guys' story. If you have a kind of an artsy project, uh, something difficult with a lot of meaning behind it, um, either leave it in the comments or private message me the, the story. Um, I think it's super interesting. And I know uh, my friend Michael's gonna try to do half done one today. Um, I think he can do it. Let me know what kind of projects you've got on on the books, um, and maybe we can share the inspiring story. And if you guys really like this channel, please consider giving one dollar per episode on the Patreon account. Uh, it really helps for the expense of this channel since uh, it's kind of a small audience. But um, I do it for fun. I don't try to make money on it but it would really help if the cost of the channel was subsidized by you. So before we go, here is some of the footage of our original trips. All right, you're on camera. It's Ryan starting to climb. Oh!
I'm all right. I wish I had my cheater stick. <laughs> Hey Ryan, I'm a whopping 15 feet. Woohoo! Hey Ryan, hey everybody. Where, where are you? I'm on the tip of this fire. Yeah, as I was like doing it, it was at an angle. I was on it, I, I saw it like chips coming off. I was like, oh please don't break, let me swing. Please don't break, let me swing. So I know I kind of still suck, but I used to really suck. Can you believe the tension system I had on that short line? I also put it on the backup. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to see the 2013 version when we actually could walk it, um, that link will be in the description below. It's going to be an unlisted YouTube video just because it's um, not relevant for the channel. But um, we actually could walk it. Justin Smested edited it well. Um, I'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out if you want. Climbing and highlining is dangerous when you're awake and even more dangerous when you're tired. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. <laughs>